Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Basking in the music. My son singing in the background. Got the rose colored glasses on today. We've got Reiki and Rock, which has been inundating your inbox lately. You've been paying attention to my, my audiobook version of my book, um, which you, you must realize I love to love it so much because I've posted every day two chapters. And tomorrow I'll be posting the final chapters of this book about a sensuous and spoiled pop star, an alcoholic and broken rock musician, a gifted Reiki healer, and a Native American medicine man show how the power of love can bring healing and redemption to the most lost of souls. Twin flames, soul unions, karmic contracts, and divine healing are all highlighted in this sensual story of a pop star who can no longer deny her heart when her love of many lifetimes shows up in an unexpected place. Will they end up together, or will fate step in to thwart their love again? Loving it. Loving it. Love doing all these the voices. And what we are here to do today, though, we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you what happens lastly. Left you on a cliffhanger today. Uh, we may want to read from it though. Spirit has asked me to come on. So Mercury retrograde ended yesterday. I'm recording this on Friday, whatever today is, April. <laughs> what the heck is today? <laughs> 26. April 26. And obviously we're back, right? Um, and they wanted me to do a check-in. So check in with them about what we all most need to be aware of and hearing and thinking about right in this now, this kind of interesting little space and time, um, which I guess they'll take us into further. Before we do that, I wanna wrap us all in love light and light love. Inviting in the guides who overlight TLC for the soul, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, Pleiadians, host of many other TLC for the soul guides and spirit guides and friends. And I did it again. I forgot my drink. Should I crawl? I'll crawl. Whenever I get on these things, it's like crawling around. My son is singing in the background. And you may feel a little chatty, chatty Kathy today or Ken. I don't know. Kathy. Chatty Kathy. Chatty Ken today. Um, as the retrograde energies, and we've still got a couple weeks, I believe, of shadow time, but um, I'm gonna fluff up my perch here. Um, shadow time. Okay, I'm back. So, um, yeah, because I felt myself reaching out to more people today, and over the past couple of weeks, I felt like people I knew that had been around just kind of like, you know, were pulled back into themselves, I guess, so to speak, to do soul work. Um, so let's, let's just, since this is Spirit saying, let, me let us all check in and see what they want to share with us, let me just stay quiet for a second and let them guide me to what they want you all to hear most in this now. And it's kind of a surprise to me too. So let's let them direct me to what they want me to do next. Okay, so they want me to pick up Reiki and Rock and they want me to do a flip and then do an intuitive read to get us started. The right side of the page. So what is this? Hold on, let me see. Where did it go? So this is part of chapter seven, getting sober the hard way. And it's between bites of lasagna and garlic bread. Okay, Gwen and Pete talked about their day and looked lovingly at each other. Rob felt comfortable and not at the same time. He loved the feeling of family here, but he didn't believe it was possible for him. How could he have a family 
when he had never really been a part of a family himself, he couldn't reconcile it in his mind. Okay, so this all goes back to a reading I was just guided to listen to before I came to this, uh, to do this show. Um, and it was talking about, uh, it's very, it's actually very simple concepts of the law of attraction, the law of manifestation. Um, they've had me, and, and it has been like, um, almost like a going back to basics of, um, you know, it, um, sometimes we get caught up in the advanced of our journey. You know, I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro and raise my consciousness and, you know, do all this magical stuff and yada yada. And yet there are times when we let the simple things um, slip a little bit. And so I think this first part of this message about checking in, one of the guys want us to know is to simplify by noticing how yeah so I think what's happening is we're making it all complicated um earlier today so I felt like I, am I doing something wrong you know am I still freaking manifestation still waiting on these things um maybe I'm not doing something right um maybe I need you know to explore it more with my third eye or maybe I need spirit to tell me it's what am I you know maybe it's some um I wanted to very clearly understand the energetics that the spiritual technology behind divine timing. And then they were like, you know, so right now they're like, whoa, you know, rewind and come back. It's very simple. It doesn't have to take all this um, spiritual understanding. The thing that you need to know most right now is how you're talking to yourself about the things that you really want which is um, a divine timing is a is a part of it <laughs> divine timing is a part of it but the other part that's really important right now is these rose colored glasses and i do sometimes think that this is like it seems so simple yet it's not. It's just like the other part of the law of attraction where you're supposed to like set it and forget it and just like go out and have fun and enjoy your life. And it feels in a way, I don't know why it feels in a way sometimes so um, counterintuitive. Like, what do you mean I forget about what I want and I go out and do something else? I think this is the weird part, right? Because you feel like you can't forget about it because it's not there yet, right? So it's like you feel like you have to keep focusing on it and thinking about it. And, um, what that does in a sense is tell the universe that you feel like you're still lacking it because it's not there in your life yet because you constantly have to focus on it you have to continue to hold space for it because it's not there um you have to continue to um you know whatever you do do ritual around it or continue to write it down on your four-year long list or whatever you know even that right they're like even that you're like affirming it's not there um So rather than thinking about the lack of it, because I was thinking about that too the other day too, like in the middle of my meta, 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 manifestation and meditation apparently, um, this um, intense like grief feeling came up about, oh, I might be, hold on a second. Okay, so I had a little bit of a like 10 minute detour. Um, talking about something totally unrelated. Well, we're bringing it back to simplicity about how we talk to ourselves, both you know, inside our minds and maybe the things we say out loud about the things that we want. I was talking about in meditation um, about um, kind of really grieving for something that wasn't here that I'd had in the past. And um, the law of manifestation and the law of attraction is right, like attracts like. So if you're in a mindset like Rob of, oh, I don't think I can ever, I want that, but I don't really think I can have it. Um, maybe there are some deep held shadowy things that still need to be cleared. Or 
it's just these repeating patterns of you've gotten so used to kind of saying these things to yourself, either internally or externally, that you don't even realize that these are running, they're looping in the background, kind of like a little record player. And sometimes the way um, I notice that that is happening is if I do a lot of like stream of consciousness, just talking to myself. Um, and sometimes those things will come out and I'm like, whoa, did I just say that? Um, you know, whoops, back up, gonna have to delete that um, thought form or whatever. Um, the other thing too is the thing like, if you really want something, you can't be in the energy of it not being there. So regardless of what it, what it is, a person, a place, a thing, um, for a place. So I'm like, oh, you know, my meditation, I was like crying for California. It's like, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just there. It's just in my soul, Cal the, the energy of California, the energy of Hawaii, the, it, it, because it's very strong, the Lemurian energy is there. And so it was just like, you know, sometimes just like pining for California. And it's like, you know, obviously not in California. Um, and even during my meditation, like this grief about like, if I tune into California, it's just like the land is just calling to me, calling to my soul. And I was like, okay, well, rather than, um, so the guides are like, yes, we realize, slot in whatever that thing might be for you. We realize you miss this place or miss this person. Sometimes it's people. So there's someone I haven't heard from in a while. And I'm like, oh my gosh, wish this person were here. You know, I could like cry that they're, oh, I want them here. Um, and rather than that, these, these places and these things are, are really always with us technically, right? I mean, I don't necessarily have to go step my feet on California to like be immersed in its energy to, you know, I like to watch a lot of like the walking tours on YouTube or whatever, go back to all my pictures. I lived there for quite some time, like over six years and oh, well, six years I lived there and on and off prior to that, I went to California for many, many years before I actually moved there probably um, almost 15 years on and off, I would go like at least once a year, if not more often, um, and spend time there. So it's like, you can go back to my pictures, all that. So it's not really gone, you know, even if that's part of my manifestation, like I want to go be there again in person in 3d, I'm not really lacking being there. Um, many of the stuff around me, my crystals, much of my furniture and stuff that I have is all from my life that I was building when I was living there. So I'm not separate from it at all. So it's just a, a slight tweak in the way that our energy is perceiving these things. Because if we're putting out the grief and the lack of that not being with us, then we're gonna to continue to get back the grief and the lack of things not being there. Especially, like I said, many of you here, like you've been meditating a long time, you're advanced practitioners, you're very spiritually connected. That means your chakra system is bigger and more advanced, which means it has a greater impact on energy. Um, you're a conduit, right? For energy, you're a living crystal. And if, if a big giant living crystal is putting out, you know, like a radio tower, like even subconsciously beams of things not being there, then you continue to get the things not being there. Same thing with people. It's a little bit more challenging, I think, because, you know, it's good, right? To have the person like, mm, you can touch them physically and you can have really good face-to-face -face conversations and you can, you know, hold their body or hold their hand. But again, then you get, you know, teary-eyed about, oh, it's not here, it hasn't happened yet, whatever. When in reality, you're the higher self of that person, even telepathically, you're linked to certain people through the cords, right, that you create that send out to them energetically. Um, sometimes you're quote unquote bound to them by soul contracts and so forth. So they're never really lost to you. So this morning I went on a walk and I was like, I could feel this person. Um, sometimes this person okay. comes in very strongly telepathically and starts a conversation with me. And it's, it's, it's as if they're there. It's not, you know, my mind talking to itself. 
Um, I, because I can feel, I, just whatever. When you're sensitive to energy, you'll know. But um, I feel it's them, right? And they're talking to me. And it's as if we were having this, it was as if we were having a 3D conversation without the person being right in front of me. We could have very well, just as well have been like on the phone together. Um, I'd rather be on the phone than text. I'm not a big texting person. But let's just say we were on the phone together. And I'm like, for any, so I was talking to, to this person energetically as if I was talking to them on the phone, um, you know, talking out loud. I'm like, oh, if somebody goes by and thinks there's that crazy lady again, um, I could just be like, you know, headphones, talking on the phone. Uh, so, you know, now it is a little easier to do that, right? Bluetooth, talking on the phone. And I had a whole conversation with this person and I believed it to be, you know, their higher self and to some extent them, but I felt like whatever they needed to know about, you know, they were gonna either feel it in their heart from me or um, telepathically, energetically, you know, their higher self was going to get my messages across to them. So I wasn't so like concerned about, you know, am I just like talking to myself? So it's the same thing, person, you want to manifest a person, they're not here, act as if they're freaking here, right? Um, you know, have these inane, you know, it's easier when you live by yourself, but have these, you know, back and forth conversations. And, you know, it did go on for days. You know, I went up to the medicine wheel. I was talking to them and I said, you know, this is quite interesting. This is a conversation we would have that I would expect us to have if we were in, you know, 3D reality with each other. Um, I would expect you to call me out on these things. I would expect me to call you out on things if I see you kind of, you know, being down or whatever on yourself or the situation, you know, we'd be here to like check each other, right? Like, um, you know, maybe you need to clear your energy. I'm noticing you're like mirroring, you know, I'm noticing you're feeling a little down, you know, stepping in. Is there anything I can do to help support? Uh, so it was very much reciprocal because the person was kind of like, or their higher self, you know, I'm not completely understanding sometimes how the energy, spiritual technology of telepathy works. Um, sometimes I do feel like it is a mindful conversation between two people and like the mental body, but at other times I do feel like it's more like higher self to higher self, but, um, you know, regardless, right, it's all part of the same thing. Uh, since the soul and the higher self drive the actions of the physical, mental, emotional body anyway, but, um, when I did that, when I had that conversation, I didn't feel the lack of that person at all. I was getting like verbal feedback from them, like in my mind, you know, as if I was hearing them clear audiently, as if we were having a conversation. So it's like, in that sense, I didn't feel the lack of them at all. And I really kind of felt really good after that. I'm like, you know, this, this was my time to support you. I would expect you to step in and ping me somehow and support me if I needed it. So the way we talk to ourselves about things not being around um, perpetuates the things not being around um, and the way we can uplift and empower ourselves is to act as if those things have already come to pass. Those things you already want are already here, have dropped down into the physical realm. Um, by doing so, then the universe the universe is not, a lot of what the law of attraction does is match energy to energy, right? It's not like thinking, you know, that's good or that's bad energy. It's not judging you about what you're putting out there. It's just giving you back more of what you're putting out. So if you're putting out the energy of this thing is already here in my reality by acting as if it's already here, then that's going to bring those things to you more quickly in the 3D realm. Okay, so, all right, so I'm saying point number one complete. All right, so point number two, see 10, zero, one, so 10, 10, like stepping into your power, mirroring. Oh, geez, I hurt my hand the other day. I'm pulling the dog's leash, and now I can't get this freaking bottle open. Oh, gosh. All right. Comfort zone. Hmm. All right. <laughs> like a little monkey or something, like drinking this. <laughs> like a baby drinking a bottle. All right, let's see if does that play into point number two? Okay, what's with point number two? What do you want me to use there?
Okay, what about Rob Strom? Rob Strom is an alcoholic and broken rock musician. What do you want me to say about him? Okay, keep going. They want me to flap. Oh, God, okay. So this is a part in Reiki and Rock. It says, he needs help, Jen. Oh, this is when Jade is trying to convince Jenny, the Reiki healer, to take Rob Strom on as a client. He needs help, Jen, Jade said softly. He's in big trouble with his drinking. He actually told me straight up that he wanted to quit more than anything, but his lifestyle is making it so difficult for him. I could feel the sincerity in what he was saying. I told him you could help him. I don't know why, but it just felt right to say it. Please don't be mad at me. I just think you can help him. I know you're booked, your client list is full, but I told him I would put in a word for him. You simply have to help him, Jenny. He's tried everything. I have this strange feeling that you're his last hope. And then Jenny, for whatever reason, divine intervention, decides to take Rob on as a client. And then she feels almost like um, compelled to do it. Soul contracts. Okay, what do you want me to say? So then they want me to get out my new most, one of my most favorite decks because the deck is awesome and the book is even better. So we're going to take out, because I don't know where this is going. Uh, oh, what this point is all about is lead us down the bunny trail here. All right, so we're going to take out the embroidered graveyard. I mean, if there was not, if there was ever, uh, this book, you have to get it with the book. I think they sell the deck separate from the book if you're going to get it. Um, it's absolutely beautiful deck. If you're listening to this, you just can't see the deck. Sorry. Um, but it's amazingly hologram and gold foiled and all of that. This deck, if you need an answer to something and you need a straight up like what's going on here, this deck is like your best friend. All right. Let's see what it has to say about this whole Rob Strom thing. He's in trouble. He needs help. <laughs> um, interesting. Card number 68, Samhain, the Veil Walker. And I'm holding this up. Uh, these are actual embroidery pieces done by the artist um, and, you know, just made into oracle cards. This one is called Samhain. That's, you know, the the season, Halloween season, the veil walker. Um, I don't even know what's happening here. There's a candle on top of like a squished out jack-o'-lantern with a bunch of, I don't know if there's moths. This is card number 68. So I'm going to get the book, which is just as amazing. All gold foiled edges and gold stamping and amazing stuff. Oh, I love this so much. It was money. It's not cheap, but it was money well spent. I do have to say. Card number 68. And the spreads in this book are amazing. The rituals are amazing. Everything about this book is like, I like your chef's kiss. You know, Samhain the Veil Walker. On a dark, I can hold it up again. And the book has full color, full page, picture of the card. Um, on a dark and sparkling night, four death's head hawk moths flutter into cluster around the flame. This is not a black candle. Of a black candle of protection. The candle guards an elaborately carved pumpkin-shaped planchette. And that's what it is. Lighting the glass eye, which projects a rainbow out into the surrounding dark world. A slice of color in the dark, showing anything is possible oh, if we are brave enough to look through the eye and pursue what we visualize with determination. Spirit, and then the spirit, I don't know what, some of the font is a little hard to read though. Spirit communing, I think. This is quite literally a calling card from the spirit world to you. When this card presents itself, someone is trying to get in contact with you. 
It is up to you if you wish to allow this contact. Grab your goodbye card and perform the severing spell on page 206 if you have fear, or perform a quick protection spell, page 182, and then ask the cards a follow-up question to learn more about the energy or spirit that is reaching out. A favorite question of mine is, does this energy spirit have good intentions, or is working with this energy spirit in alignment with my highest self and for the greater good of all? Trust your instincts. And the introspection is when this card greets you, whether on Samhain night, a bright spring morning, or any time in between, it's an invitation to cast your most powerful magic. Perhaps this is a formal spell at your altar or sacred space, or maybe it's when you're creating art, singing, dancing, or walking amongst nature. Nature, nature, oh, maybe it's somebody fast, nature. Ask yourself what actions, hobbies, thoughts, and beliefs heighten that magical feeling within you and then pile them all together in your own custom ritual. Decide how often you would like to partake in this ritual. Will it be daily, weekly, following the moon phases, or a yearly appointment you make with yourself? Okay, so there's a lot of things going on here because the planchette... Someone is trying to get in contact with you. Um, the planchette has me thinking about my card from my deck, wherever the heck it's out, over there somewhere, about, um, so what it says, she has a planchette, but it's like, she's got the planchette, but it's only a tool because she's co-creating from a higher power. Um, and then you can draw a card to learn who is trying to reach out. Well, we've already gotten past the trusting your so this card, this deck too, even though it seems um, very ornate and all that, is I think really good for beginner people. Uh, that'd be like a really good Christmas gift. Who is trying to reach out? Let's just see if that's because we've got Rob Strom, but Rob is like a divine masculine, not a character. To me, he's like a spirit guide. He needs help. Rob Strom needs help. Okay, hold on. Let me just let me just follow this little bunny trail for a minute. Rob Strom. He's a rock musician. He's an alcoholic. He's struggling. He really wants to get better. He doesn't know how. He's tried. You know, he's not strong enough, whatever. He's telling himself. And then he meets Jade, who, you know, we don't ever really say it in the book, but there are twin flames. Um, she immediately connects with him. She wants to help him. She reaches out to her friend, Jenny, who's a Reiki healer and says, you've got to take him on as a client. And Jenny feels compelled to help him. Why? You know, they're all like, why do I feel compelled? Well, because of these soul contracts, soul contracts. Okay. So let's, this rainbow hologram thing. All right. Let's just get one more card. What are you trying to tell us? Oh, two more. They're giving us two. Um, what in the heck? Oh, this is that one. This card, number 63. Okay, we got card 63, which says Grandpa, but it really looks like Brandon. So maybe someone knows Brandon. This has come up, I think, before when somebody else read, reads these cards. The font is, I, if I have any feedback for this deck, it's, the font is very hard to read. And card number 15, I don't know what in the heck. Comported, it looks like a, a skeleton leaving a body. You are really making me work for this one. What is this? Well, Grandpa obviously is, you know, an elder spirit, possibly on the other side, reaching out, 63. Or an older person. What does spirit want us to know? This is a check-in. Grandpa. A lot of these cards I've never before. Grandpa is the very best of the divine masculine. Hmm. And we have Rob Strom. He's a, in my heart, he's a divine masculine. He's not quite there yet in the book, but this, hmm, <laughs> there may be something there too. Um, so there may be a divine masculine who you wish was further along in their awakening journey than they actually are. Um, you feel compelled to want to help them. Um, you feel like it's maybe your soul duty or your soul contract to somehow set them, you know, on quote unquote the right direction. Um, this archetype is a person who performs a repetitive action practiced throughout their years to the point of perfection. 
The action brings a calm joy and an almost meditative state to the practitioner. Our grandpa here has mastered the art of gardening, but really it can be any action honed over a lifetime. The action itself has become a tradition. This archetype energy is bursting with knowledge and now it's time to pass it on to others. Let's make grandpa proud and try to do the thing with this spread. A grandpa spirit awaits you. Somebody who's a master of their craft with an ability for passing on the knowledge they have gained. A natural teacher. They find guiding and mentoring easy and may have been this support role in their life. Their message is to seek to learn by practicing, but do not expect perfection from yourself and what you are trying to master from the beginning. Just aim to have fun and learn. Be patient and enjoy the process. When the student is ready, the master will appear, the Tao Te Ching. We often put way too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect, but perfect is a man-made illusion, seldom ever possible. We can get close, but it takes sometimes a lifetime to learn. So shed guilt and toxic perfectionism and instead find joy in the action itself. The mastery of your craft is in your future if joy is in your present. And then this comforted card. Okay, I think I know where this is going. Actually, that was my... I think there's many messages, maybe because there's many different people watching this, but with this grandpa card and this, it's comforted. I don't know why it looks like comforted or whatever, but it's comforted. Um, I asked Spirit to show me what the transition to the other side is like. That night I had a dream that I died and it hurt me to see my family sad and not be able to hug them. This is kind of just what we're talking about. I made lights flicker, moved things to show I was close, but they put this down to coincidence. I was so frustrated. My one solace was that my dog, Bo, could see me. I couldn't touch or feel his fur, but his presence was comforting. Time moved differently. I saw days drip by like seconds. In time, I adapted to my new state and my family healed. And I never felt forgotten because I was spoken about and remembered often. When I woke up from my dream, I felt my dog nuzzle me and heard my husband softly snoring next to me. I sighed with relief. The world was so bright, so alive, so vivid again. And I was so grateful. When we lose someone, we have a hole in our lives that will never be replaced. If this card comes through, it's time to consider what you believe happens when we die. Many of us carry great anxiety about death and fear it, hide from it, denying ourselves experiences and staying small. Explore this fear and this belief. Journal your thoughts and see if giving yourself a little clarity helps ease the fear a little. So there's two things here. One I think is just what I talked about earlier about this, you know, somebody's not there and you're kind of feeling the loss of them or the lack of something in your life, be it a person, a place, or a thing. It's like this parrot guidance again. Um, and they really haven't gone anywhere, right? So this for so for some of you, this could be um, an elder spirit, someone who's crossed over to the other side. It could be your twin flame. Um, or a soul family member who, or a pet who is, you're really feeling the lack of them in your life. And the feeling of lack of them or it is so strong that it's causing you to attract more of that in your life. Cooperative components are here to help you. And sometimes, you know, Unbeknownst to us, people are sent to help us um, kind of heal from those wounds, right? Um, so in this case, like Rob, Rob in the book, Rob Strom, the character, had a very terrible childhood. Um, his parents were really just addicts, alcoholics and addicts who didn't want a baby. You don't know why they even had one. And rather than like suck it up and care for him, they decided they would rather continue to party. And so they abandoned him at some child foster place and he never saw them again. And so he grew up in a, like a little boy school or whatever. And um, it really pretty much like 
guard his thinking of relationships as he moved forward into his life. And in order to not, and, and then rather than deal with the emotions, he continues to stuff them down with alcohol and drugs and all, mainly alcohol. He's more the alcohol one here in the book. And um, he meets Jade, who's his twin, and they continue to deny their feelings for each other, um, you know, because of past things that have happened in their past. They, didn't, they, they affirm, continue to affirm, you know, I'm not going to love anymore. I'm never going to have anybody hurt me like that. Jade herself, she was hurt many times. I'm never going to love again like that. All these things they keep telling themselves in the book. Like if you read the book from the perspective of watch these two and what they're saying to each other internally and out loud, you're like, oh my God, are they ever going to manifest each other like this? Um, and it does. And that's actually what happens is they continue to affirm, I'm never going to love like that. I don't want to feel love. I don't want to open my heart and feel that pain again, that pain of loss. Um, and so they continue to shut themselves down. And what ends up happening is they do separate and go their separate ways. And then um, I won't spoil a spoiler alert, but divine inter a very big wake up call happens and divine intervention does step in to do something to change the situation. But it's not anything you would ever really ever want to, have to happen to anyone to get them to wake up and see what's going on. And um so I think that's one message, right? Again, back to how are you talking to yourself? People around you, um, you may be mentoring people who are not as awake and aware as you. Um, how are they talking to themselves? Um, this um, person that I was having the 5D conversation with, I got the sense in my feelings that they were a little down about their situation. I think they even came in and told me that they, they, they felt like they couldn't move forward, even though they wanted to move forward. They didn't say they felt stuck, but they felt like, you know, the time's never right. Um, I'm always busy. These things always keep coming up. And I'm like, okay, oh, take a step back. You're already like messing it up, right? Th you're not messing it up, but you're already like talking yourself further into it there. So we had this conversation and actually come up with some, hopefully, steps they'll take action on um, to get them moving forward again. Rob, he wants help, but he doesn't believe anybody can help him. Uh, you, so like, take all this back to yourself. Like, you, you want help. You don't think anybody can help you. Maybe you don't think you're worth helping. Um, and I do feel like with this, um, people from the other side, you know, this is just, and it coming out with a Samhain card and we're like a few days away from Samhain in the Southern Hemisphere as the recording of this and Beltane coming up in a, in a few days, ne um, is it next Wednesday? Um, where the ancestors and elder spirits are coming in very strongly to support us. You know, we're here, we're with you. Grandpa's not lost, you know, he's just a thought away or grandma or whoever. Like I, I kind of speak a little flippantly about grandma and grandpa and all that because I didn't know any of my real, you know, blood relatives on either side of my family other than like I, I knew my mom and my dad. But I never met, you know, my maternal grandparents and my paternal grandparents. I don't know any of them. So when I talk about them, it's like, well, I didn't have a relationship with them. So there's not a lot, you know, I, can get, I got to go on there. Um, I just knew a little tiny bit of what my parents had told me about um, each one of them. Uh, so, uh, but I honor who they were and what I know about them and, you know, what they went through in their life. And um, a lot of times I like to, and many of you tell me, you know, like this too, like I still driving through the cemetery, even around here, you know, we've got some little gravestones that go back to like 1860 something or whatever here, the, the, right around when the town was founded. And I know that's not, you know, if you're in the UK, you're like, who cares? You know, we've got knights, graves, thousands of years old or whatever, hundreds and hundreds of years old. Um... I just honor them for what they were able to accomplish and maybe not accomplish in their lifetime that sometimes I think they do live vicariously through what we're able to accomplish in this like quote unquote new earth now. Um, so, 
you know, this came up in the daily today too. Trust in the universe, trust in the universe's plan for your life. There is actually a plan. Sometimes I'm like, is this just willy nilly? Is there a plan? Is this going anywhere? You know, we can't see the bigger picture sometimes. Um, we just see the little day to day things. It's like, am I making any progress towards anything? Um, you know, those are those days when you do have to like check yourself before you check yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, you know, with your your thinking about, remember what we said about how you talk to yourself and the words that you say and the thoughts that you think. Um, it doesn't matter if you're just thinking them or saying them. Um, it's all, it affects your energetic field. So these are places where the self, your self-awareness of what you're doing and saying and thinking to yourself is very important. And you know what you could do too, and I do think it's very helpful, is you know, maybe there is a spirit on the other side who you resonate with very deeply, you know, it's grandpa or grandma or whoever, your dog, and call one of those in as a helping spirit guide to help like ping you or show you like, oh, you're doing it again, you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Um, maybe there's some sign you can set up, you know, like, oh man, if I'm doing it again, grandma or grandpa or whoever, you know, show me a, I don't know, a certain bird or feathers, something. And that's going to be our sign. That's going to be our little secret sign. You know, like, up, oh, you're doing it again. You need to like pull back and clear your energy and get your mindset straight and back to the positive. Um, so many messages. And then of course, too, just like the comforted card, like, you know, these souls are over there. They're doing fine. Everything's fine. They don't need anything. Um, they don't want anything from you. It's nothing to be scared about. Um, it's not wrong to talk to the dead. You know, all these stigmata that could be, you know, oh wait, no, stigmata is different than stigmas, right? Stigmata is something else we talk about somewhere else. All right, so message to complete. Like this, like a transmission. Message three. What do you want to talk about now? They are just down with a Reiki and rock. All right, let's go back to the third point. They're like, well, I'm already breathing the book. I might as well. Reiki and rock. What's the last point? Jade said, You gotta live a little. Jenny was more than happy with the silk scarf she had purchased at French Kiss. A little vintage shop. It was light pink with gold sparrows. Ooh, put a bird on it. Oh, I think this is about having fun. She would wear it if she ever had another date, she thought. It had been much too long since she'd had a night out. Um, Alejandro books Jade a room at the Wilshire. He's playing around. They're playing around. She's getting. Oh, this is where she's getting ready to go have fun at this party um, where she ultimately, oh, she relaxes. She's going to go have fun. And she's going to this party with, well, her sole intent of going to this party is to meet Rob Strom. She doesn't know him yet. She just knows, like, he looks good to her. So maybe they can hang out and have some fun. Um, and then she books a hotel room and she goes and has her bubble bath and all that. I'm sure this is about having, you know, enjoying yourself while you're waiting. But let's just see. This doesn't feel like an embroidered graveyard moment. This feels like a spring fling moment. Let me get my deck. Let me get my deck spring fling. Oh, in the box. <laughs> this deck is beautiful too, the embroidered graveyard. Okay, let's see. Let's, anyone who grabbed out spring fling fling for a reason. Spring fling. All right, this is my deck, one of my decks. I don't really tout my decks anymore. I don't know why. I think because I want to redo a lot of them. But, you know, but the, you know, the, the tried and true happy cloud is never going to change. All right. Let's see. What do we want to say about partying and buying that little silk scarf? And Okay. We got three cards. We got magic. Card number nine. And night energy. Hmm. Oh, look, if I flip the number nine, flip that frown upside down, it gets B magic. The nine turns into a B. B magic and B magic, like B E E. Um, night energy. The night is, you know, something that comes in to, is it saving the day? 
I think it's energy that comes in, yeah, to like move you, push you forward. I do. I think this is, I think this is just very simple last message of like believe in the magic of your dreams. The nine is always about, you know, the wheel turning and things coming to conclusion and then things um, pushing us forward. Um, believing in the magic of your dreams, the whole back to the whole set it and forget it kind of thing and acting as if it's already happened and going and enjoying your life. Uh, yeah. Is that really it? <laughs> yeah. So, let's see. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Oh, uh, yeah. The deck is, the bottom of the deck is nature walk. And love is the answer, which is the final card in this deck. So it is. They're, they're pretty much done. They're like, set it and forget it. Practice what we've just talked about. Get yourself out in nature. It's always a good place to clear your energy, to get fresh perspectives, to get renewed, even if it's only, you know, five minutes or whatever. And doing what you love, um, going and taking a bubble bath, you know, going to your favorite restaurant. And it doesn't have to be extravagant, you know. Jenny's like, I'm not rich like Jade. I'm just going to buy myself this little scarf. It's fine. It's enough. And Jade's like, that's not enough. You need more. Uh, and sometimes it's just the little things, like the colors of this deck, you know, like, Oh, I like these colors. I'm a color person. I know all of you aren't. Some of you are like, oh, that's too much color. It's overwhelming. You know, you're more subdued or like different color palettes. But I'm like, ooh, the artist in me and the rainbow warrior in me likes these colors. I mean, you can tell just by looking. So I'm like, colors make me happy. You know, dressing up and playing these little games, reading books, you know, do what makes you happy. That just like um, the, the time is passing anyway, right? The time is going to pass whether your thing is here or not. Um, and what better way to um, honor your manifestation, honor yourself and honor those that have come before you than to just live your life to the fullest. I think that's really, if I had to say like what is spirit what should you want for yourself and what does spirit want for, for you is just to live your life to the fullest, to just squeeze every little precious drop out of these moments that you possibly can um, to get to the end of your life. And do you like, or not even the end of your life, sometimes the end of the day, I'm like, did I have a good day today? Did I squeeze every drop out of this day that I possibly could? Or even in the moment, sometimes I'm like, can I make this moment any more fun? Maybe I can put some crystals in my shower. Maybe I can light a candle while I'm cooking my, my breakfast. Um, little tiny things add up, right, to, to keep your vibe high. Um, and, you know, maybe if it's somebody you're hoping for, you set out a second little plate for them. Um, if it's somebody on the other side, you know, make a little spirit plate for them. Um, and put a little food on it and give it, you know, offer it like as if they were sitting there with you. If it's somebody that you just wish was in your 3D reality, you know, set out another table setting and act as if they're sitting there eating their lunch with you or whatever. What would you say to them if they were really there with you? What would you do? What plans would you make? Um, it's all about the, what is that? The fake it till you make it and just have fun and live your life. It's It does seem so much like parrot guidance and you know many of you I, I've wa I look at comments sometimes of readings of other people that I watch and you know sometimes people's comments are so negative like no oh, you've been telling me this for 30 years or you know oh this that and the other and it's like well well we can see the downfall happening there to that manifestation is never going to happen like that so it's just what you make it you know and you have the choice at any given moment regardless of what's happening around you to decide what energy you're going to put yourself in is it going to be despair doom gloom grief sadness i mean sure feel the feelings all right don't not feel the feelings don't stuff them down like rob strong because he's like doing himself a disservice they're both are jaden it all comes to a head here very soon um, well, it's all, if you listen to today's, if you go back and listen to what I posted earlier, you'll be like, oh, what's happening? I, even I said, as I was reading the audio book, cause I like to put some of my own little comments. are like, oh, Rob, what is he doing? Even though I know the book, right? It's the book, best book I ever wrote, but it's like, 
oh, and it's sometimes, I guess that's so, that's the one last thing. It's like, it's, it's so challenging to see others around you who don't know any better falling this down this trap. Oh, that came out in today's reading with Jenny. She's like, she was, she's self-aware. She's, you know, very spiritually connected and it's so hard for her. Um, in a way, many of these guides in this book and these book in my books are like aspects of myself, but it's so hard for her to always see the highest potential in people when they don't see it in themselves. Um, it, it can be very much like a Debbie Downer. Like why, you know, sometimes I'm like, why can't that person just see this? And so there's some boundary setting there too, because Jenny has finally come to realize, Jenny's the Reiki healer, like I can't control circumstances. I can't control people and their situations. There's just nothing I can do but let their own fate and destiny kind of play out and just sit and watch it happen, you know? And sometimes try as you might, as many times as you do try to step in, Jade tries to step in and help Rob get him this appointment with Jenny. He has an appointment with Jenny. He's feeling really good. But then one little thing comes along with, and with Jade, has some weird little falling out with, with Jade, his meeting with his date with Jade, and he just throws it all to heck in a handbasket. He just throws all that good work with Jenny out the window, all his manifestations about I want to be a better person and get rid of my addiction, just throws it all to heck in a handbasket. And he's like, F it, I just want to feel good. So the only way I know how to feel good is to go back to the what I did before, the drinking, 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 stuffing my feelings down, and that's gonna just make it all go away. Well, it didn't make it all go away. It makes things much, much worse. Um, so, yeah. There's not a whole lot you can do if it's somebody else that you're watching kind of, um, trash their life, you know, in the fire pits of despair. It's very disheartening and it can, and it can be, you know, a downer and you're going to have to really learn how to build up some strong boundaries there. And, you know, if the person, so the way I do this now is, you know, if I see it, I see it. If I feel like I want to help sometimes without the person asking, like somebody's energy needs clearing or whatever, I will work with their guides and stuff to do an energy clearing. This is people very close to me. This is not like you guys or whatever. I wouldn't do that unless you came to me but this is people in my inner circle um and then you know if I see it happening I'm just like well here we go again and then um the best thing is when they can come to me directly and say you know this is how I'm feeling can you help me and then I might give my parent guidance sometimes I feel like I have the same conversations with people over and over and over again and I'm like spirit do I continue to have these same <coughs> parent guidance conversations with people over and over and over again and even the person themselves had said, like, I know you've told me this before, but it helps me stay motivated to keep hearing it. And so I think that's why, just like we made this check-in with you guys today, this may not be new news. This may not be many things. I know many of you have been binging on, on TLC for this whole videos, and you may be like, oh, we're saying these same things again. We're hearing the same messages, this parrot guidance. And it's like, well, yes, because the messages don't really change. The overall things that you need to do, be doing or thinking about or be self-aware are no different than they were yesterday. But you have to keep having that motivational pep talk and that reinforcement to keep you going, to keep your energy high. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, sometimes I'm like, do I watch another card reading? I'm not doing it all day long, but I'm like, you know, here comes a reading and I know this person's going to give me parrot guidance and I'm like, but I like them and their set's cute and all that. And I like their energy. So I just hang with them. I'm like, here comes the parrot guidance again, the same messages getting over and over and over again. You know, somebody's coming and all these same messages. And I'm like, okay, but I like to see the cards, you know, so do what you can and just surrender the rest to source or the universe or your angels or guides or whatever, right? And on that note, we are going to close this down at 4444 um, on this counter anyway. And I've got to go run some errands and go out in the windy rain and, um, you know, live my life as if everything I want is already manifested. All right, you guys, I love you all very much. I want to thank you for continuing to play with me here at TLC for the Soul. And we will see you all again soon. Take care. This episode has been brought to you by Frolicking Fraulein.
Interactions with frolicking Fraulein could bring on magical, mystical euphoria, dizziness, lightheadedness, sudden feelings of losing all sense of 3D reality. Oh no, someone's been a naughty frolicking Fraulein.